These are slides of Ektachrome E100 color film. Look how cool that is. It is 2022. There's a worldwide shortage of color film. Many are getting discontinued and becoming very, very expensive. Digital cameras do a much better job taking all kinds of photos and can even emulate the look of film by using certain filters. Yet, I still love film photography. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why. And I'm just about to head on a film photography session, hopefully out there in the rain. The sun is about to set soon and I see a little bit of umbrellas. Always love the rain for the extra reflections and mood that it provides. So please join me on this film photography shoot while I explain why I still love it. Now the first point why I enjoy film photography is a pretty obvious one. This is a digital camera. This is an SD card. This is a film camera. And these are the films. Which one would you rather shoot? Which one is more fun? The answer is pretty obvious, but you probably already knew that. Choosing Cinestill 800T today because it is getting dark and it's gonna rain. Also got a new lens for my Pentax. This one goes down all the way to f1.4. So hopefully we'll get enough light even in the dark. Good to go. I wanted to structure this video in a way to simulate the experience of film photography. Usually in these kind of videos, I would show the results, the photos that I took immediately. But that is not what happens when you're actually out there shooting film. One of the reasons I really like film photography is that you cannot see the results immediately, which creates really fun anticipation and can cause some interesting surprises. And I want you, the viewer, to relive the suspense of this experience with me. So the photos will be revealed later on after I bring them to the lab and after I get them back from the lab. We're gonna review them together in real time. All of a sudden the rain started pouring and everything turned very very beautiful. That it was very easy to finish that one roll of Cinestill 800T and switch to our next film Lomography 800. And there's another thing that is fun about film, all the different film stocks. They all look a little bit different, so if you're bored, just try another one. Experiencing a new film stock yourself is so much more fun than looking up on Google what somebody else shot with that particular film. And here's a first person perspective of the photos that I took that I'm most excited to see later. I also had my Ricoh GR1B in my bag, which coincidentally just had the same roll of film inside the Lomography 800, it's just a wider angle lens that is a slightly slower in f-stop, so might struggle with light, but I wanted to finish that roll as well now that I had the opportunity to do so. It's probably the most photogenic rainy day that I've seen in a long time. I just hope that the photos in the Bentax are okay because I did a double exposure and then something weird happened with the film at the end but I made sure to take many photos of the better looking scenes just to make sure I hopefully get something but yeah I'm, uh, I'm excited to see these photos it's not raining that much anymore but I definitely wanna finish these rolls of film as soon as possible so that I can see the results but I don't want to waste the film either so we're gonna try to make it worth file so just got back from the shoot, I ended up finishing two rolls. The other one's still inside of my Ricoh GR1V. Here is the Lomo 800. And the Cinestill is inside of my bag. That was a really fun shoot, but turns out there is still about 10 photos inside of here that I haven't taken. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. I'm probably gonna shoot some test photos with a projector that I just got that I never used before. And tomorrow we're gonna bring these to the lab, then we gotta wait a couple days, and then we finally get to see the results. Something did go wrong a little bit at the end of these rolls, or one at the end and one at the beginning. Um, sometimes the pentax can glitch a little bit, I think. Um, 
I might have done an incorrect double exposure or there might be like a very overlap double exposure at the end. It happened a couple times before and I haven't entirely figured out why. Um, either way, we're gonna see the results soon. The following day I did some low expectation daytime photography at the Design Plaza and dropped off the film to be developed at the local lab here in Seoul, South Korea. Which by the way also has one of these really cool film vending machines. It is called Film Log. Focus, bitch. So I just got a text from the lab. The film is finally here. I well, not finally. It actually only took one day. Usually it takes longer. This was very fast. But this is definitely the most fun part of film photography. I only have an idea of what these photos might look like. I don't know if I screwed up the shutter speed, the focus, if something goes wrong. I don't even know what the tones are going to look like and I don't entirely even remember. Even though it's been only two or three days, I don't exactly remember every single photo that I took. But now we're going to log into the online portal of the lab and uh, we get to see the results. And I hope they're not terrible because if they are, I ruined the entire video. <laughs> so here's the online portal. Let's start with the Cinestill. So with this roll, I used a Promist filter. Again, definitely you can tell the glow, but it looks like I didn't entirely screw up. It looks like these results are acceptable. Very, very glowy. The rain was very, very hard. Oh, actually, I did miss focus a little bit on some of these. Initial impression is pretty interesting. Let me check the other two first before we take a closer look at these photos. And here is the Lomo 800 with the Pentax. Something went wrong in the beginning, but it seems all right for the most part. And I finished this during the daytime yesterday. And let's check the other one. I do have to download these onto my hard drive because the website is a little bit slow to preview them to give you some more detailed looks at these results and uh, some comments. Oh, the light leak is still there a little bit. But oh, wow, these look pretty cool. These are with the Ricoh GR1V. This camera sometimes has a light leak at the edge. I thought I'd fixed it with tape, but apparently not. All right, let me download them and uh, let's take a closer look in a minute. So looking at these results, there's a couple of really cool photos here and a couple of really um, screwed up photos here. I definitely made some mistakes. And often it's the photos that you least expect to be good that are actually the best ones. And the photos that you expect to be good are nowhere to be found or just look like crap. And this aspect of film photography is really fun and addicting. Like this photo of the design plaza that I took just kind of with the mentality that I want to finish the roll so that I can see the results from the previous day is actually really nice. I really enjoy this one. Very cool. And I thought it might be cool, but I wasn't expecting it to be the best photo of the roll or one of the best photos of the roll. And this just makes me want to go and shoot more film. I actually put a black and white roll of film into my camera that I didn't finish. I'm probably going to go and shoot it again because it's a nice sunny day and I can, I can work with this style of photography more. Another fun thing about film photography is that it allows you to kind of see your own work from a third person perspective. I find that on digital, when I see the photo immediately, I'm too close to my own work to see it objectively, so to speak. But film photography and the delay that it allows, it makes it easier to gain a more objective sense of your own work, at least before you get Alzheimer's. The look of film cannot entirely be replicated with digital filters. Of course, many have tried. Future film has many interesting and fun 
presets or profiles that you can shoot to try to get the look but it's never really entirely the same. The problem is you can sort of look at a film photo that is perfectly exposed and then take a digital photo and edit it to look sort of like the film but when it comes to incorrect exposures, when it comes to the replicating the grain, when it comes to coming up with ways how film reacts to different lighting conditions it's kind of impossible to still do it digitally. There's a reason why some high budget productions in Hollywood or you know even TV shows still insist on shooting film in 2022. It just looks different. Film photography has actually influenced the way that I also edit my digital photography. I think the best example of this is highlighted in one of the first YouTube videos that I uploaded on this channel uh, a couple of years ago. It is a roll of Extachrome E100 that I shot in Hong Kong that I underexposed. And when I got those results back, it created a style of photography that really influenced the way that I shot from that point on, that I really never would have been able to come up with had I only shot digital photos. But once I saw those film results, I thought, this looks really cool. Let me try to do it again. Let me try to edit my digital photos to look like this film as well. And yeah, like I said, it's not totally the same. I'm just taking the elements that I like about film photography and trying to apply it to my digital photography as well. I mean, ideally I would always shoot the film, but because this is Ektachrome E100, it's ASA 100 speed film. It takes a very narrow operating window to be able to come up with these particular results. Or you could use a tripod. I just lost my cable recently, but I shot one roll of this in Dubai as long exposures. I would love to shoot it in the future. I'm just waiting for the kind of a daylight rain situation that would work for this film. This has also happened with my portrait photography, shooting Lomo 800 and Cinestill, pushing it one stop. I found that I actually like underexposed film for this particular style of photography better than properly exposed film. I would have never found that out had I only shot digital because underexposing digital just makes photos dark. Underexposing film makes the shadows muddy and it increases grain, I think. And it's just a different thing. It's a different type of look. And yeah, you have to shoot film to find that out. Now, of course, if you're really good at film photography, if you're a veteran and you know exactly how to shoot film and you don't make these happy accidents, then, you know, it's less exciting. But especially in the beginning, when you're trying to learn photography, when you're trying to come up with your own thing, I definitely recommend it to everybody. So while I was out shooting, I just thought of one more reason why I think film photography can make you a better photographer, and that is because of the price of film, currently it costs like one dollar almost every time that you press the shutter. But even without the price, film cameras are not designed to be spammed. Every photo is supposed to be more considered. You have to slow down, especially if you're using a mechanical camera where you have to input the settings yourself, where you don't have autofocus. It literally forces you to become a better photographer. It forces you to learn how to select the perfect moment to press the shutter much more sparingly. At the same time, when you go back to digital photography, you learn how to appreciate the tools you have available to you, but you also become better at picking the exact right moment. More film photography videos coming. I want to try Ektachrome when the conditions are correct. I want to shoot some Vision 3. I'm going to go shoot black and white now, but probably not going to be a video, but yeah, stay tuned for that. Also digital photography. Hope you enjoyed this one. See you next time.